The desert when the sun comes up, I couldn't tell where heaven stopped and earth began. Tom Hanks. Only two things I know about Albuquerque. Bugs Bunny should have taken a left there. And give me a hundred tries and I'll never be able to spell it. Jimmy McGill, the character from Breaking Bad. people. Hi, I'm Ingrid. I'm Jessica. Just in case you forgot who we were. And this is another situation in case you accidentally clicked on something and now you don't know where you are. Right. And in case you deliberately check clicked on another situation and you don't understand how you're hearing a new episode because it's already <laughs> been, again, a really long time. Uh, yes. Our dedication is, to the podcast has not faltered. It's just a time children conundrum. That's not the word I wanted. That's not the word. That's not the word. We are not a thesaurus kind of podcast, so that's fine. We are not, nor a pronunciation podcast. <laughs> Ooh, I hope it's going to be a bad one. Uh, well, I will say um, I have to agree with Jimmy McGill spelling Albuquerque. It was so hard. So I just started abbreviating it in my when I was writing my stuff. <laughs> and Breaking Bad, by the way, if you have not watched it, is amazing. I'm assuming that that's who it was. Like I had a it was just a quote by Jimmy McGill. And so when I then I Googled who Jimmy McGill was, and the only person that came up was that character on Breaking Bad. So if there's a real live Jimmy McGill that I did not give you credit, so sorry. So, uh, hi, everybody. We've missed you. I don't know if you've missed us, but we've missed you. Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have zero updates, nothing to share. I don't even remember what our last episode was about. Well, we used my one in three episodes for the entire month of October. Right, right. Well, for domestic violence awareness. Yes. So our our last episode... Like, legit episode was sometime in September. Oh, that was me doing uh, astrology. Zodiac. That's yes. right. Wow. And the time for that was, like, June. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> so just in time for the holidays, we're back. Merry Christmas to you. Uh-huh. And be thankful. <laughs> yes. You know what? Do you remember we did... Hatfield and McCoy's last year for, for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy, happy feuds giving. Oh, that's right. Okay. Hmm. Did we do Not another family that. feud? Uh, I believe I no. I did the feud of the Packers and the Bears. <laughs> oh, that's right. The Bears. <laughs> the Dub Bears. <laughs> I forgot. And still believe in love. All you Packer fans out there, believe in love. We have a young team. Yes, I would do anything for love. I would do anything for love. But don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Yes, ma'am. Where has some time gone? <laughs> what I has been know. going on? This is Thanksgiving week here in the U.S. I'm... Yes. I, I don't Thanksgiving know. Thanksgiving week. It's... Next Feels week like, is December. Yeah. I mean, I still don't believe it's 2023. Like, I write 2022 sometimes on dates. Like, 2023 well, has been a blur. I have. Been I special. I am still special. Thank you. Everyone is special. Um, I did want to give a plug for this. Uh, I... If you know a veteran, a family member, an active duty member who are in crisis, it does not matter what kind of crisis, please have them call the Veteran Crisis Line as 988-PRESS-1. Get that number out. That 988-PRESS-1 is for veterans, active duty, veteran family members, 24-7-365, 988-PRESS-1, please. Well, that's enough talking. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, this is a po- this is a podcast that is what we were supposed to do. But Jessica is going to talk to us about I don't know what. Albuquerque. Um, it is about the war zone in Albuquerque, which I had no idea existed okay. until. So obviously we're going on like random topics because my, my next topic is I'm actually really excited about, I'm not going to say what it is, but what, how did you choose this? I was listening. Oh, I was listening to a podcast. Uh, I think I was listening to, I was listening to the serial killer podcast for a while and then the stories just got to me and I couldn't listen to it anymore. So I believe that is where I heard about the Albuquerque war zone for the first time because that was the only podcast I was listening to at the moment. Okay, I feel like this is going to strain my brain to pay attention and follow. So get started. And I may have to have you repeat stuff and explain stuff to me. <laughs> oh, no, it, I think it's pretty straightforward. So okay. I say it <laughs> makes sense in my head. Uh, yeah. Okay. But again, you're Source- special. Hush. Sources. Um, NPR, the governor tried banning guns in Albuquerque. The public health emergency continues. Um, NeighborhoodScout.com, CommunityLiteracy.org, uh, Encyclopedia.com, Wikipedia.com. And that's it. I would just like to point out that even though we haven't really been consistent over like the last six, seven months, at least your Wikipedia use has remained <laughs> In place. <laughs> I mean, it is a good when you want to get like a, a detailed, like an overview of something, it's a good place to start and then go from there. So, yes, I'll keep my love affair with Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. All right. So, where is the war zone? It is an area running along both sides of Central Avenue between the San Mateo and Wyoming Boulevards. It is known for high gang-related crime, drug use, trafficking, prostitution, and other social crimes. Social social crimes are behaviors and activities that offends the social code of a particular community. For example, abortion, assisted suicide, prostitution, um, sexual orientation used to be a social crime back in the day. So this area takes up around four square miles and earned its reputation in the late 1980s, early 1990s. There's conflicting information as to when it started. Can I point something out? Just sure. because you named those as social crimes, that does not believe that we feel that they are truly social crimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Totally agree. Um, actually, like every single one of those, I don't feel is a social crime. So, <laughs> Oh, and I shouldn't have said prostitution. I should have said sex work. I'm sorry. That was... um. My bad. So before world, the history of the war zone, before World War II, the area was mostly unpopulated. There were some homesteads, but they were scattered. The New Mexico State Fairgrounds were built in this area in 1938, and after the war, there was a population increase. This was due to the job opportunities with Kirtland Air Force Base and a laboratory company, which I don't know why I didn't feel the need to name it, but it's just a laboratory company. <laughs> The population increased from around 35 numbers. Why do numbers trip me up? 35,500 to over 201,000 from 1940 to 1960. So the area was developed quite quickly. Central Avenue was part of the Route 66 back in the day. So a lot of businesses, motels, diners, and gas stations were built along that strip. In the 60s, the area took a hit because of the building of Interstate 40, which took traffic through an easier route from east to west. And the Kirtland Air Force Base moved military personnel to on-base housing, so they didn't have the revenue from the the military families in person. Due to the low-cost motels and apartments, immigrants and new people to the city moved there. In the late 80s, crime began to rise, and the location received its sinister nickname. I was very excited to use that word, sinister. Crime grew so bad that in 1997, the city put up barricades to make it more difficult for the criminals to get out and enter the war zone. The barricades were eventually removed, and I couldn't find the time frame for when they were moved. So crime data. This was fascinating. The total crime index for Albuquerque is 1 out of 100. Is 1. I'm so sorry. Okay, so the, the crime index is 1 to 100 in the U.S., And the total crime index for Albuquerque is one, with 100 being the safest. So Albuquerque, (laughs) that means that Albuquerque... Yeah, explain that, please. 
I'm doing it. That means that Albuquerque is only safer than 1% of U.S. neighborhoods. Yeah, had no idea. Violent crime rates per 1,000 residents of Albuquerque is 13.96. New Mexico is 7.88. And the national median is 4. So uh, what is a violent crime? Do you know? Yeah, I actually am going to talk about it. Violent crimes is literally... (laughs) It's coming in two sentences, so just chill out. <laughs> Chances Sorry. of Sorry. Beca- <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I, you had the same questions I had. I was like, what is technically a violent crime? Chances of becoming a victim of a violent crime is 1 in 72 in Albuquerque and 1 in 27 in New Mexico. Violent crimes consist of murder, rape, robbery, and assault. The U.S. violent crime rate per 1,000 for murder is 0.07. Rape is 0.043, robbery is 0.61, and assault is 2.84. Compared to Albuquerque's, the murder rate is 0.21, which is triple the U.S. state rate. Rape is 0.89, which is a little over double the U.S. Robbery is 3.0, which is over triple the U.S. average. And assault is 9.86, which is also over triple of the uh, crime rate for the U.S. Why is it so bad there? Oh, I'm going to get to it. Don't worry. (laughs) Property crime rates of Albuquerque versus U.S. Burglary for Albuquerque, 7.73. U.S., 2.71. Theft, 27.33 versus 13.94. Motor vehicle theft, 8.71 8.71 versus 2.68. Albuquerque crimes per square mile is 171 crimes per square mile. New Mexico's is 23 per, squ- per square mile. And the national median average is, or the national median is 26 per square mile. So Albuquerque, 171 crimes per square mile. Which is, I don't, what, like five times, six times the That's national. That's crazy. Isn't and it? You did say you did say square mild. Well, once. thank you for correcting me. Appreciate that. <laughs> special, special, special. Okay. So I went to crimemapping.com and searched the area where the war zone is located. <laughs> I'm like, I just wrote that. Okay. From October 31st, 2023. To November 6, 2023, there were 726 records of crime. When I searched all of Albuquerque for the same dates, there were 882 records of crime. So out of the 882 records of crime in Albuquerque, 726 of them were in the war zone. The war zone on women. This was I was this was taken from a WordPress. Um, almost every night there is automatic gunfire. Police and EMS sirens are heard every few minutes, as is shouting and street fights. Seeing an unconscious person on the side of the road is so common that most people go by without noticing. When someone calls to report a dead body, it takes EMS about ten minutes to respond. I know because I've done it three times. And the I, you'll find out who she is in a second. Three times to report a dead body. Yeah, yeah. How many times have you reported a dead body outside of your work? Never. Yeah, same. Zero. Zero. Whoa. Yeah, big fat goose egg. I know. Okay, and and in like so many wars, it's the women who suffer the most. An average of 40% of all the street women who live in the war zone will be raped each month. That's right. I said each say month. That, say that number again. 40% of street women will be raped each month. Yeah, it's insane. Oh, so you're pretty much 100% guaranteed to be raped at some point in your life. I mean, I know Mm -hmm. that doesn't match with the statistics that you gave earlier, but 40% each month, eventually it's going to be 100%. No, most street women are raped several times a year. So most of the women are raped a a couple times a year. Yeah. Do you mind explaining what a street woman is? Uh, A sex worker. Okay. Uh, internationally, officials and commentators now recognize rape as a weapon of war. In Eastern Congo, where the prevalence of rape is described as the worst in the world, 30% of women report being sexually assaulted during their civil war. That means that rape is much more common in the war zone of Albuquerque than in the world's worst 
actual war zone. I didn't give her credit. Uh, she's the executive director of a um, nonprofit over there to, to help the, the people of the war zone. So can I ask these statistics? Is there like a time frame, a, like this year to this year kind of has it always been bad? So, well, I mean, it's been called the war zone since the late 80s. So I, I didn't look into like how long the rape has been prevalent for. But I mean, it started getting its nickname back then because of all the crimes. Mm, okay. So renaming. Albuquerque has renamed the war zone to the international district. <laughs> nice little spin. <laughs> Increased tourism. Come to the international district. Okay. According to... Oh, wait. There's, real, oh, there's really good food there. <laughs> <laughs> there actually authentic, is. Authentic there international is. foods. Um, okay. And I actually did give her credit. I was too jump. So according to the executive director of Street Safe New Mexico, which is where I got the um, women crimes on, uh, Albuquerque is a Catholic charities hub. So when international refugees needed a place to stay, they were re relocated there. Since the war zone has the cheapest rent and lowest cost of living, refugees are moved to that location. Starting in the 90s, it was the Cubans, then Vietnamese, then Central American, and now East African, hence International District. The food there is supposed to be amazing due to the different cultures who live in this small area. Several students and travelers have posted that it's quite safe to get food during the day there. We need to be mindful of the area and not cause conflict. One student, because the University of New Mexico is pretty close by. One student even said not to stare at someone in the eyes to be viewed as challenging. Yeah. Sounds that, like an animal behavior. Yeah, it is. It is. Whoa. And I do just want to say that the equivalent of the refugees and um, immigrants moving to that location does not equate why the crime is so bad. I think it's the socioeconomic status of the the low income um, and ability to get out of that pattern of living for families. So I, I one thing that was one thing that stuck out. I was like, it almost makes them sound like the refugees are causing this, but it's not. Like it, it was there. To begin with, and like the just the low cost of living, and then the route, the former Route 66, um, and all those diners and motels that were just cheap to stay in. So, um, I'm, I I don't want to blame it on socioeconomic status, but sometimes when you can't get out of raping, oh, that part I give no excuses. I'm talking about like the okay. robbery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no. Robert. And there's gangs. There's a lot of gangs there, too, in that in that area. Okay, so currently, uh, September 8th, 2023, New Mexico's governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham, issued the executive order suspending open and concealed carry. This was in response to a slew of shootings in Albuquerque and the neighboring um, Bernalillo County. And it did not go over well. Police said it was unenforceable. Some lawsuits were brought up. And other government officials were calling for the governor to be impeached. Following the complaints, the governor applied the ban to only parks and playgrounds. A former police officer spoke up about crime in Albuquerque. His 12-year-old son was in a park in July for football practice. And people, this is a quote, and people decided to come have a rolling gun and stabbing battle within feet of where he was practicing. And it caused a person to be shot. And the ages of the, those folks were 13, 14, and 15. Wait, that was in the in the gun knife fight or the kids that were practicing football? The kids in the gun knife fight. Whoa. Yeah. So New Mexico passed a law earlier this year and makes it possible to file criminal charges against people who negligently allow their guns to fall into the hands of kids who use them in crimes. Should you visit? Should you visit Albuquerque? <laughs> Most sources say yes. It is safe to visit, but to be mindful. If you are planning on moving there, do your research as to what areas are good and what areas should be avoided. As with most places, just do your due diligence. There's an epic balloon fiesta that sounds worth checking out. Did you say what the population, overall population of Albuquerque was? Uh, I didn't. I just said the population increase. From, uh, from okay. the 40s to the 60s. I don't know what the current population is. Well, hey, Google. 
562,999 in 2021. Oh, I have 599 in 2021. 562,599. I don't know what you said, but you didn't say that number. I thought I, I thought that this is the number I'm looking at. Oh, okay. <laughs> I Actually, don't know I, what I said. I, 2023, it was 558,523. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I had no idea about the war zone in Albuquerque or the international district. So apparently what I read is that while like they've changed the name on like street signs and everything, people still refer to it as the war zone. That's interesting. Isn't it? So, yeah. Well, since we're back, let's not be droning on forever and ever and ever. Agreed. All right, so let's, so let's do the bees. Bees. Uh, I'm going to say B Street Safe. Mm, I like it. Be diligent. Okay. Don't be sinister. <laughs> oh, I like it. Don't be a naive traveler. Okay. Well, like which means be diligent. It doesn't matter. It <laughs> doesn't just... it, it doesn't matter. You there is no criteria for the bees. Don't be a evil horrible person in the war zone. Just okay, so we're back. We're not going to promise when the next episode will be. It'll just be whenever we nope. pop up in your feed. You're welcome. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Exactly. And if you want us to cover because anything, feel free to reach out. It Yes. Because we have no direction anymore. None. <laughs> nope. We are we are your latest running amok podcast. <laughs> Maybe that should be your new name. <laughs> it should be. We should rebrand. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you. And uh, you'll hear us when you hear us. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy <laughs> holidays. <laughs> Definitely. And okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> If you'd like to reach out to us or submit your situation, please contact us at another situation podcast at gmail.com or find us on Instagram at another situation podcast. We're also on Facebook at another situation. Another situation is produced and edited by 0.5 Pinoy. Music is written and performed by Tim Crow. Another situation.